Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Barnabas on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. If you're joining us on Facebook, go ahead and put a comment in the comments section of Facebook Live, letting us know where you're worshiping from. Our opening hymn is in the blue hymnal in the pew rack in front of you, and it's number 533. Please stand as you're able for the cross. This summer, our worship continues on page 355 of your Red Book of Common Prayer. And you'll also need the hymnal in just a moment for the Gloria. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now, now, and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Gloria is S278 in the front section of the hymnal. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Grant us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. <clears throat> the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, <clears throat> This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 33 on page 626, verses 12 through 22. Page 626, verses 12 through 22, I will read up to the asterisk, and you will complete each verse. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. The Lord looks down from heaven. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze. He fashions all the hearts of them. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him. To pluck their lives from death. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered God faithful, who had promised. Therefore from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, 
as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come Holy Spirit, come and fill this place, and fill our hearts, and fill our homes. Amen. Amen. Over the last six months, I've been preaching a lot about emotions, and today is going to be another time. The premise is that most of us can only name a few or understand a few of the emotions that we have within our hearts, but the better we understand our emotions, 
the more it will help us in our spiritual journey and our relationship with God, other, and self. You might be able to tell from the readings what the emotion's going to be today. There is a scene in the original Willy Wonka movie that starts out as a sweet boat ride through a magical land and turns into an escalating scene of fear and loss of control. As the boat enters a dark tunnel, the mood turns, and Willy Wonka, played by Gene Wilder, says the following poem about fear. There's no earthly way of knowing which direction we are going. There's no knowing where we're rowing or which way the river is flowing. Is it raining? Is it snowing? Is a hurricane a-blowing? Not a speck of light is showing, so the danger must be growing. Are the, are the fires of hell a-glowing? Is the grisly reaper mowing? Yes, the danger must be growing, for the rowers keep on rowing, and they're certainly not showing any sign that they are slowing. This is a poem about anxiety and fear, which includes escalating loss of control, worst case scenario thinking, and total uncertainty. According to Benet Brown's book, Atlas of the Heart, anxiety is defined as an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, and physical changes like increased blood pressure. Anxiety can be both a state and a trait. Some people feel anxious mainly in response to certain situations, while others can be naturally more predisposed excuse me, to anxiety. Approximately one-third of U.S. adults will be affected by anxiety disorder in their lifetime. Our anxiety often leads us to two coping mechanisms, worry or avoidance. Unfortunately, neither one of these coping strategies is very effective. For anxiety and its related dread, the threat is in our future. For fear, the threat is now in the present. Fear is a negative, short-lasting, high alert emotion in response to a perceived threat. And like anxiety, it can be measured as a state or a trait. Some people have higher propensity to experience fear than others. And what we fear is very personal and varies by individual. Some are afraid of rodents or snakes. Others can't stand the inability to see their surroundings. And yet others are afraid of observing their children in peril. No matter how many lists there are about things we fear, most of the lists will include fear of social rejection. Curiously, we experience social pain and physical pain in the same parts of our brain and the potential exposure to either type of pain drives fear. Throughout evolutionary history, anxiety and fear have helped every species to be wary and to survive. Fear can signal us to act, or alternatively, to resist the impulse to act. It can help us to make wise, self-protective choices where we might otherwise sail mindlessly along ignoring the signs of trouble. But our fear and our anxiety need to be understood and respected, perhaps even befriended. We need to pull up a chair and sit down with them, understanding why they're showing up, and ask ourselves what there is to learn. Dismissing fear and anxiety is not useful to our spiritual quest for connection. Our age has been called the age of anxiety, and I think that's probably a good description for this time. It seems like we no longer know where our foundation is when we're not sure what is certain, when the world and our worldview keep being redefined every few months. When these happen, we are going to be anxious. And we, usually we want to get rid of that anxiety as quickly as we can. I know I do. 
Yet to be a good leader of anything today, a good pastor, manager, teacher, parent, we have to be able to contain and hold patiently a certain degree of anxiety. Probably the higher the level of leadership someone has, the more anxiety one must be able to hold. Leaders who cannot hold anxiety will never lead us any place new. One of my favorite definitions of a leader is one with, who has a non-anxious presence. When leaders exude anxiety, that anxiety is contagious. However, when leaders manage their anxiety and fear, they lower the anxiety of the entire group. That's probably why the Bible says, do not be afraid, almost 150 times. We heard it at the beginning of today's Old Testament reading when God said it to Abram. And we heard it at the beginning of today's gospel reading in which Jesus says it, to, says it to his disciples and by extension he says it to us. Do not be afraid. Now let's be clear. Anxiety and fear are not bad in and of themselves. It's what we do with them that can be useful or destructive. If we cannot calmly hold a certain degree of anxiety, we will always look for somewhere to expel it. And the most common way to expel anxiety is to throw it like darts at someone else, especially at someone from whom we differ. Expelling what we can't embrace gives us an identity, but it's a negative identity. It's not life energy, it's death energy. Formulating what we are against gives us a quick fix and a clear sense of ourselves. Thus, most people fall for it. People more easily define themselves by what they're against, by whom they hate, by who else is wrong, instead of by what they believe and with whom they love. And when fear moves us away from love, then it dampens our spiritual journey and causes disorder in the world. Now, I find it beautiful that in the face of fear and anxiety, God does not bid us toward courage. Instead, God draws us toward fear's essential sister, rest. A sister who is not meant to replace fear, but to exist together in tension and harmony with it. For fear's origin is not evil, though evil certainly wields it against our soul daily. However, when we rest, even in the midst of fear, we are embracing God's shalom, that peace of God which passes all understanding. So as followers of Jesus, what are we to do about fear? I found at least one good answer to this question from author and broadcaster Lisa Colon Daly, in which she recommends having a conversation with our fears as part of our inner growth in God. She writes, we don't have to hunt fear with a pitchfork. Fear has something to say. Our fears offer an invitation to engage with discomfort in the inner place. Will you give your fear the chance to speak? DeLay says, when you realize that you are afraid or not doing so well, sit down with your fear and have a conversation. And here are three ways to converse with fear. First, when you feel or notice discomfort, pause. Stay paused until you know more. Second, acknowledge what is happening in the moment. Be honest. Ask yourself, what do I feel? Maybe it's fear, but maybe it's also anger. What else is there? Maybe I feel overlooked. Third, dig a little deeper. Ask, what is this trying to show me? Or what else might be going on? Give yourself some time 
and delve into your fear. As you delve deeper, you might start to understand why you feel angry. You might realize that it wasn't such a good day. You might see that three things happened today that made you feel frustrated, inferior, and like you weren't being taken seriously. Ex unexplored fear is a misplaced opportunity to take responsibility for ourselves. Instead, let's encounter the fear or the discomfort with some questions and curiosity. And then, once we've noticed something new, we move on. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. There are many things to fear, but do not let those fears separate you from God, other, and self. Instead, reach through your fears and move on and into God's embrace. You can do this. Perhaps you already are. So give yourself a hug as you live with fear and keep going. Please stand as you are able. In the tradition of our church, let us say together the statement of Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed, which is found on page 358 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God. Our prayers of the people are Form 1, which is found on page 383. And if you are joining us on Facebook Live, please put your own intercessions and thanksgivings in the comments section. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Bishop Lucinda, and for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our President, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for this city, Arroyo Grande, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in Ukraine who are in the midst of war, and for those who have fled the terrors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the diverse and vibrant Native communities who make their homes here and across these lands, for all Native peoples on whose ancestral homelands we are worshiping this morning, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Within our community, we continue to pray for Laura, Laura Christy, Christy Baker, Baker Willa, Willa, Tom Laura, McDermott, Jim, Jim Mim Mim Jr., Mim Jr., Amy, Amy Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald, Richard Racho, Lucas, Luke and Billy, Andrew, Donnie, and repose of the soul for Vin Scully and Glenda Bombini. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. And from the bidding book, we pray for healing for Bobby. We pray for thanksgiving for the 15th Lambeth Conference. We pray for the repose of soul for Tony Dow. We pray for healing for Carol Lopez. We pray for healing for Gladys Johnson. We pray for healing for Nicholas Shinghal. We pray for healing for Barbara. We pray for healing for the Olson family. We pray for healing for Moreno. We pray for healing for Luis Pinalosa. We pray for, uh, for the mental health of Lindsay. And we pray for healing for Carl Hunter. We pray for healing for Stan Martin, for healing for Wayne Stipp, for repose of the soul of Snooks, for healing for Peter, for healing for Tim, for healing for Janet, and for healing for Josh Mann. Do we have any requests from Facebook Live? Yes. Bid your prayers of recovery for, for Matthew Z and Dan. Bid your prayers of healing for Janet following open heart surgery and readmission for severe gastritis. We offer this prayer as the 15th Lambeth Conference comes to an end. Gracious Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth, in all truth, with all peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Now turning back to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God,
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us safely share peace with one another. And if you're on Facebook Live, go ahead and put the word peace or some other appropriate word into the comments section of Facebook Live. In addition, if you're on Facebook Live and you have a birthday anniversary or other celebration, let us know in the comments section so that we can celebrate that. Please be seated for the announcements. As David is coming up, we heard in the prayers um, that um, we have a Lambeth Conference, which is happening in England, in Cambridge, um, right now. Lambeth is the gathering of bishops from around the world. This time there are 650 bishops that are gathered across the Anglican Communion. Um, this uh, Lambeth Conference hasn't happened for the last 14 years. It was delayed twice, once because of COVID and once because of issues around gender and sexuality. One of the things that's different about this gathering of 650 bishops is 80 to 100 of them this time are women. So, and a lot of those are from the US, but they are also from around the world. And then for the first time, six to eight of the bishops gathered are gay or lesbian. We do have some conflict still in the Anglican communion around issues of gender and sexuality, um, conflict that makes some grumpy, but it's better than it's ever been before and we do see advances. Um, so I'm very grateful for those. David. Excuse me, that is Canterbury, not Cambridge. Thank you. <laughs> the voice from above. <laughs> Good morning. I'm David Otteson, your vestry person on call, and I have several announcements for you today. First, I'd like to remind you that our adult education classes are continuing with the second in a series of three on the topic of sacred spaces. The classes meet on Thursday nights, beginning with a light supper at 6.30 p.m., followed by the class at 7.00. Now, Deacon Susan tells us that there are going to be two training sessions for Eucharistic ministers and usher greeters. The sessions are going to be held on Monday, August the 8th at 1 p.m. That's tomorrow afternoon. Make a quick correction. Oh. No Eucharistic minister, just usher greeters and lectors. And the second session is next Saturday, August 13th at 11 a.m. I hope you'll be able to make one of these sessions. Things continue to change during these strange and perilous times, and Deacon Susan will joyfully tell you all you need to know about the training sessions, that is. Next, this year, the Episcopal Church Women's Retreat for our diocese is going to be held in San Juan Bautista on the weekend of August 19th. There's still time to sign up, so if you're interested in going, Please see Adam in the office for details. And finally, it's been one year since the St. Barnabas Thrift Shop opened in its new location. We're currently, hey. we're currently on track to double the sales that were made in 2019. To celebrate this success, the thrift shop is having a big buy one, get one free sale on all the items in the store. The sale is going to be held for three days only, beginning on Thursday, August 18th, from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. So let your friends and neighbors know. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, I mentioned in my sermon that a third of U.S. adults have anxiety disorder. We all suffer anxiety, we all have fear, but there are some people that have it at unusually high levels. Unfortunately, a very goodly number of people never get help or counseling. Um, so I would encourage you that if you feel you have more anxiety than you need, follow the wisdom um, of many people and uh, take advantage of God's blessing and uh, seek counseling. That is, I think, one of the best gifts that we can give ourselves. Yesterday, we celebrated the life and death of Jim and Betty Miller. Um, we gathered here with their family. Both of them had died a few years ago, but they have finally been buried over in our memorial garden, and it was wonderful to be able to celebrate their lives um, with their family. Any other announcements? Any birthdays, anniversaries, or other celebrations today? Jeff, do we have any from Facebook Live? Yes, we do. Uh, Peter Zajac wishes a happy birthday to Deborah. 
and your mother is wishing a happy anniversary to Roger and Judy Kime and Barbara and Bill Kime. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Any other celebrations? Yes, Pamela. Happy birthday to Trevor, Raymond, and Glenn. Very good. Three birthdays. Yes, Rachel. Sister Judith. Sister Judith, and welcome back from your travels. Linda? Very good. Happy birthday to them all. Carol in the back. Happy birthday to Kathy. Happy birthday to Kathy. Kathy Bond has a birth. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, Leslie. Uh, my friend Linda. Friend Linda. Very good. Yes. Happy birthday, to Tyler. Happy birthday, Tyler. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm traveling to Hawaii to visit family with my girlfriend. So we're going to have do the travel prayer. Yes. Very good. Anything else we're celebrating today? At the bottom of the front page of our bulletin, we have three prayers. We'll say these in order together for those celebrating and traveling. Let us pray. Gracious God, who made us in your own image, we thank you for life, love, and joy. Send your blessing upon these, your children, who have completed another year. Surround them with your grace, fill them with your love, and strengthen them to be your servants in the world. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the anniversary prayer, praying together. We thank you, gracious God, for the love you have implanted in the hearts of your servants and for your continued blessings upon them. Give them kind and loving hearts, always ready to ask forgiveness as well as to forgive. Support them through times of trial strengthen their love for one another, and may that love empower them to be instruments of God's love in the world. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the prayer for travelers. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congrats to all who are celebrating. And now we're celebrating something bittersweet, right, Judy? Yes. Would you want, can you come up? Yes. Judy is one of the wise ones that we have here at St. Barnabas who is moving away. Um, she has sold her house, and I think the moving truck comes Wednesday. Wednesday, and she's moving down to Santa Barbara to a wonderful retirement community. Um, so she is wise in making those steps probably before she needs to. Yeah, I'm looking forward that I will need it. That's good. Um, Judy is incredibly active here at St. Barnabas. Um, when I first came here, she was part of our adult ed planning team. Um, Bible study, and she quickly moved into Stephen Ministry leadership as well, and um, thrift shop now. You're providing some leadership there as well as a manager. Uh, and the transition. Uh, thank you. Um, did I miss any of the ministries? Oh, little, little things here and there. Um, and a Eucharistic minister um, and lector as well. Um, so we are going to miss Judy. She is, certainly does have a servant heart, and so we want to send her off with a blessing. Let's raise our dominant hands toward Judy. Judy, we bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we ask for God's guidance as you move forward into your new adventures and ministries, whatever those may be. We ask that God continue to throw people into your life that can love you and people that you can love back as well. You have a lot of love to give. We give you thanks for that gift of love that you have shared with us for so long and that gift of your being. In all the names of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. We are going to celebrate Judy during coffee hour, so come over to the coffee hour. There's some special treats. Several of the ministries that um, Judy works with are, uh, have put that together, and we will continue to celebrate Judy and send her off. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mm-hmm.
Thank you, Judy. We are sending one of our wise ones off into the world. Any other celebrations today? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. This summer, our Eucharistic prayer, which is Eucharistic Prayer A, can be found on page 361 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. You'll also want the blue hymnal for the two pieces of service music that are listed in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. It is, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy said Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will again. come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God, all are welcomed at God's table.
Our post-communion prayer is on page 365. Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Learning to manage our natural tendency to fear or be anxious through our rest and trust in our Lord. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>